I had a totally different video planned for this week, but you guys went, dare I say, ape shit over that Pixelmator Pro video last week. So I've got more Pixelmator content for you today because I aim to please over here on my channel. I'm going to show you how to make this dripping text in Pixelmator and Apple Motion. In last week's video, I showed you how you can turn text into shapes. And this week, I'm actually gonna show you how I would use those shapes in real life in motion. Let's just dive right into it. So this is Pixelmator Pro. Let's start a new 4K document and use the type tool to add some text to our project. Now I'm going to change the font of that text to phosphate. It's a little bit more round and we're going to make it solid. And I'm just going to center up this text and make it big and juicy. And I really don't like this brown color. So even though we're gonna change the color of it in motion, I'm just going to make it white and hide that image layer. So now we just have our text and then let's convert this text to a shape. So I'm just gonna head on over to the layers pane, right click and convert this text into a shape. And now you can see if I drop down in my layers pane, I have each letter individual and they are actually shapes. If I right click one of these letters, I can make it editable and then you can see I have all my control points, but I'm not gonna do anything with the control points here in Pixelmator. Let's send this baby over to Motion and add some animation to it. So to send this project to Apple Motion, I can go up to File and go to Export, or I can of course just hit Command E. And under Format, we're gonna save it to a Motion project. I'm gonna call this Drip on my desktop. And then if we open our Finder window right here on our desktop is a folder called Drip. And if we open that, there is a Motion Project in there. And if we open that, my project is in Apple Motion with the layers as you saw them in Pixelmator Pro. You can see here in my canvas is the word Drip, but if I head on over to my project pane, you can see that each letter is actually a shape, not text type, and that is going to allow us to manipulate the shapes of each of these letters. All right, the next thing I'm going to add is some paint dripping from the top. I have a PNG image I'm going to drop in here for this, and I just wanna let you know that if you want access to this working motion project with that file and also like the Pixelmator file, everybody that subscribes to my Patreon gets access to those files after I upload here on YouTube. So if you want those working files, check out my Patreon. So I'm going to drop my paint drips PNG above this shapes group in my project pane. And I'm going to reposition it so it's higher up on the screen. And I'm going to take my letters here and I'm just gonna bring them a little bit further down. All right, let's start adding animation to these letters. I'm going to be doing this using keyframes. So what I'm going to do is start with the D letter in my project pane. And I'm going to right click and select edit points here in my canvas. And now you can see that my D is comprised up of points. I can move these points. So the first step I'm going to take right now is going to be really important because I don't want to mess up permanently the configuration of these shapes. I want them to land in this configuration with these control points at the end of my project. So what I'm going to do is jump down in my timeline a couple seconds head on over to the inspector window and under the shape tab, I'm gonna go down to the geometry sub tab and I'm going to add a keyframe for all of these control points for my D. And then I'm going to proceed to do that for the rest of the shapes in my group. That includes the Bezier mask that makes up the center of my D. Again, making a keyframe on all of the control points. I'm going to jump to the R Again, head over to geometry, control points, and the mask for the R, control points, and so on and so forth for the rest of my letters. That's a very important step because you wanna make sure you preserve the shape of your letters in the end. So we're gonna start here at two seconds in. We're actually gonna work backward in our timeline from here. And then I might play with the timing of all my keyframes, but at least I know at the two second mark, my letters are all in the exact shape they need to be in. All right, let's go back to the D shape select it in my project pane, and I'm going to jump back 10 frames in my timeline. And the shortcut to do this is to hold down the shift key and arrow backward. There's 10 frames. And now I don't have to make more keyframes here in my inspector window. When I start moving around these points, they will automatically make keyframes. So what I'm going to do is move around my points so that they start to form the shape of a drip. Now remember, we're working backward here. So at this point, the drip's going to be pretty long and skinny. 
All right, this first modification to our control points looks good. Now we need to go backward in our timeline and make this drip shorter and shorter. So I'm gonna head back another 10 frames in my timeline. Again, we'll probably be playing with the timing of these keyframes eventually, but for now, I'm just gonna worry about moving in 10 frame increments. All right, let me go back another 10 frames. And now another 10 frames. And then we're gonna jump all the way back to the very beginning of our project. And we're gonna move those control points so they are entirely within our paint drip PNG. And now for some finishing touches on this, I'm going to cute my playhead to the very beginning of my timeline, select it on that, what used to be the D, it doesn't really look like a D right now at this point in our timeline. We're going to add a keyframe on roundness under the shape tab under geometry. I'm gonna crank up that roundness to 50, and then we're going to jump to the two second mark where our last keyframe is, and we're gonna dial down that roundness to zero. So it starts out looking much rounder and more gooey, and then by the end, it's got the sharp edges that we expect to see on this font. Now let's move on to the Bezier mask. That's the inside of our D. I'm gonna cue up my playhead to the two second mark, and hold down my shift key and arrow back three times to go back 30 frames. And on that Bezier shape mask inside the D, let's play with the roundness value. I'm going to add a keyframe for roundness here, and I'm gonna bring it up to just a value of 25. Then I'm going to jump 10 frames forward in my timeline, and let's bring that roundness down to zero. I think this just gives it a little bit more of like a gooey effect. All right, let's move on to the rest of the letters. Guys, while I'm keyframing these letters, if you like this video, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Okay, now that I've got all of my control points moved where I want them, it's time to adjust the timing of all of my keyframes. So I feel like the start of the drip would be slow and the end of the drip where it really forms the letter would go faster. So I'm gonna space out my keyframes more toward the beginning of my timeline and then collect them tighter together as my timeline moves forward. And I'm going to do this with one letter at a time. So starting with that D, I'm just going to play with these keyframes in my timeline. If you're not seeing these red keyframes, you wanna make sure you have this icon highlighted, see it here? You do not wanna be making changes in your keyframe editor, which is revealed when you click these three interlocking diamonds. You just want the one in your main timeline. So this is what I ended up with. My first two keyframes starting from the beginning of my timeline are 10 frames apart. The next one is five frames, as is the next one, and then four frames, and then four frames. To me, just check out that D, that feels right. And then I'm going to play with the timing of my Bezier masks and then move on to the next letter with the same timing. All right, now all of our letters are dripping in in unison. We can play with the timing of the sets of keyframes on each letter to kind of stagger the action if we want. So to do this without completely disrupting the flow of the drips, you just hold down your shift key, select the keyframes you wanna move. So right now I'm working on the R and the mask within the R, and I've selected all those keyframes, they're now white, and I'm just gonna slide them a little bit down in my timeline, so it's all kind of happening at different times. See how the R comes in a little bit later? And I'm going to do that for the I and the P as well, staggering them even later in the timeline. All right, so now that we've got all of our motion set, we need to decide what color we want our paint drips to be. I'm gonna go for a rainbow gradient. You could do a solid color, you could do an image. Let me show you how to do it. I'm going to take these two groups, one with my paint drip and one with my drip letters. I'm going to select them both by holding down my command key as I click on them with my mouse. Right click, let's group these guys. So now they're all one group. Let's head on over to the library and under generators, we are going to select gradient. And I'm gonna drag this gradient from the library above the group I just created with my drips and my letters in it. Then I'm going to head on over to the inspector and under the gradient line here, under the generator tab, I'm gonna select this icon and I'm going to select the rainbow gradient. There's all sorts of pre-designed gradients in here or you can customize your own. 
And then this definitely doesn't look quite right. We're going to drop down here on the gradient line in our inspector and under the start and end values, I'm gonna play with the X values here. So I get that color the way I want. And if I wanted to change any of these colors, I just select the color tag and I could make this more of a pink. You can also play with the placement of these colors by moving these color tags in our gradient window. All right, I think that looks nice. Now, how do I get the paint drips and the letters to look like this gradient? Super easy. Just select the gradient in the project pane, head on up to object, select add image mask, and under the mask source well, where it's asking you, what do you want the mask source to be? I'm gonna select that group I just made where I have the drips and my letters. I'm gonna click on that line, hold down my mouse key and drag it into this well here. So now our drips and our letters are all in this rainbow gradient. Now the last thing I want to do is make it look like all of these drips from my paint drip PNG image are also running down the frame. And we can easily accomplish that by just keyframing the scale on the Y value, but we do need to take another step first. Let me just show you why. If I play with the Y value on the scale of this paint drip, you can see that the peaks up here on this image are actually rising to the top of the frame, which is totally unnatural. Everything should be moving downward. So we can easily fix that by playing with the anchor point. Let me just undo what I just did there. Let's right click over that paint drip image in our project paint and select the anchor point tool. Now what I wanna do is move my anchor point, which is this little blue circle to be in line with like the highest peaks here in my paint drip image. And I can do that by just grabbing this green arrow and dragging that anchor point up. Now I'm going to head back over to my inspector window under the properties tab. Let's add a keyframe on the scale Y value and let's run our playhead all the way down to the end of our timeline and increase the Y value of that paint drip. And now you can see those peaks stay in place because I changed my anchor point but all my drips are running down the screen. So there you go, guys. That is how you can take text in Pixelmator Pro, convert it into a shape and make it animate in Apple Motion. Did you guys like this tutorial? Let me know down in the comments if you want these working files. Don't forget to subscribe to my Patreon. I will link to it down in the description or you can find it in the banner of my YouTube page. I picked out some other videos I know you're gonna love and I'll see you again.